Hello, builders. We would love to welcome you to this episode of the Build Your Success podcast. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're listening to this. Whenever you're listening to this, we welcome you to the Build Your Success podcast. Here at the Build Your Success podcast, we like to build you so you can build others. We hope you're building a team, building a business, building a career, whatever you're working on or towards. We want to be part of that journey. We like to help you through our coaching, training, and speaking. And we love to have our special guest on the podcast here. And we do this for your enlightenment and, and just to get some real leaders. So today I'm excited to have Rut Patel. Rut was born and raised in India. At the age of 19, he got the chance of a lifetime to come to America and pursue his dreams. Coming to a foreign country, his odds were stacked against him. Despite everything, he has started his own engineering company at the age of 21 in 2017 and has discovered his passion to creating solutions to protect our planet and serve our communities. Well, Rut, that's a that's a great cause. Welcome to the podcast today. Thank you very much, Brian. I really appreciate that having me on the podcast. Well, you're one Thank of you. our podcast guests that's actually local. You know, we're both here in Lakeland, Florida and Central Florida. Yes. But, but I did meet you up at the uh, Catapult and realize what a great leader you are and, and what an industry disruptor you are. And we're going to have a conversation around that. But before we do that, I'd like to ask you our signature question here. What does leadership and being a leader mean to Rut Patel? Um, that's a great question. And lead, what leadership means to me is um, you are doing something and you doing something for some kind of cause, uh, whether it's your personal mission or mission to uh, change the society or something about the society or something that you don't like in this world or whether you like it and you want to do more of it and you get other people involved in it. Uh, to help you with that mission, um, uh, other people you help other achieve their uh, you help other people achieve their mission. That's what being leader to me is. Yeah, I think that is a wonderful definition. Helping others achieve their mission, and I know you do that for some of your clients. So, for some background here for my listeners to understand what you what you do and what you do in life, mm -hmm. what your business is, explain how you have created this engineering company and and what services you provide. So um, I'm not an engineer, but I came to America in 2015 and uh, always wanted to start an engineering company because before I came to America, I was in engineering school and I just knew it in the first year that it's not for me. Uh, but I wanted to be an engineer so bad and just wasn't good at um, uh, school. So I'm like, but I was good at technology. So I was like, I want to do a business, some kind of engineering business, and um, I can hire engineers later. So that was always in back of my mind to start an engineering company, but just had no idea where to begin. So when I came to America, first two years, I um, first I came here, just had to do the jobs I had to do to you know start start somewhere. You all we all have to start somewhere. So my first starting point was Dairy Queen. Uh, making ice cream, serving ice cream, but always in the back of my mind that I wanted to start an engineering company. So why I'm working right now, it's because of that. I'm saving money to start that company one day. And in two years, I was very lucky. So in two years, I was um, able to start my own company. And uh, it wasn't hard. It wasn't easy starting your own engineering company in a new country where you're not even an engineer. But uh, I had to start somewhere. So we started using drones to help um, companies like energy companies, agriculture companies solve their problems. And then later I realized that I can get engineers involved and uh, actually start an engineering company that way. Yeah, what a great story. And and knowing those humble beginnings, but, but you started, as, as we always encourage people leadership, you began with the end in mind. So, so the Dairy Queen job, was was the start and and, and the point in, in your mind you're saying hey i gotta do this so i can do that and and yes. making those sacrifices in life or so so yeah. so today you know if a listener's working in a in a in a part-time job or a small you know they think I, i'm not making it that's the beginning that's the start and, and use that for a ramp up and the seed to, to grow a, a, a business and, and long-term goals and set those sights on that and don't lose sight of it you know, Rutt's an example of how to do that. You know, I began my construction career as a laborer and, uh, and, and just knew that I wanted to move forward and press forward and grow myself. So 
man, that's great encouragement. And, and what you've Thank done, you. I've, you know, I've kind of witnessed it locally, seen, seen your company grow <laughs> and what you're doing and, and working for some amazing companies. I mean, you, you've got a great resume as far as who you're providing these services for. Correct. So we, I've been very lucky enough to work on some very important project in, uh, in last five years. So in California, uh, one of the clients, we serve one of the California's biggest utility company, and uh, we help them prevent fires by inspecting their, um, their assets out in the open. Because you know, California is so dry, and here in Florida, we are very humid. We don't have a, a bushfire problem, but or there in California, even the tiniest spark uh, can do a huge damage. Like 10 million acres just burned in just last 10 years because of fire in just last 10 years. So it was like a big impact. And when I went to actually California to start that project, um, we realized, like I realized like, how much damage the fire was doing there. And I felt so lucky that I got to work in one of the project where we prevented 11 fires by doing our work, me and our team. So that was like, um, that really inspired me to like, okay, now we are gonna stop wasting time and doing the service that don't make any difference. Now we realize working like this, even the small team can make a huge impact. So why don't we carry on making that impact on three main necessity, energy, agriculture, and infrastructure. I like the fact that you highlight not, not just the search. So you, sometimes businesses go and do exactly what their clients ask them to do measurement, but, but you see what the main goal is. You see what the end objective is and how it's helping. I mean, you're not just scanning, you're preventing fires. And yes. I think that that's the end, get goal. To see it, the end goal and what their true mission is. It's such a greater motivator. Well, I think that's a great lead into something you have in your application here. And for those that are listening to the podcast, if you ever want to be a guest on our show, we have an application process. Go over to buildcs.net to our guest application, fill out the application, and we'll definitely consider you as a guest. But in, in Rutt's application, he says, knowing the difference between knowing, understanding, and realizing. I want you to you know help us part through this and understand the difference between sure. these things. I know there is a difference, but help us understand that why you wrote that. Sure. Because, uh, you know, we all come to a, a, at a point in our leadership journey, whatever we're doing, we are leader, no matter even if you are someone is managing you or you are managing others or you're just working for yourself or you work for a big company. One thing we forget just because our post doesn't say or our title doesn't say we are a leader or like that doesn't mean we are not a leader and what i'm trying to say that with that is um it's very important to know it's also important to understand and it's also important to realize but you cannot have one without other so for example to know um you you can we, we always say we give knowledge to other people uh leader give knowledge to their follower or follower um um, I got this knowledge from here. Well, what we got is just information and data. Uh, what we do with that data, how we understand it, that becomes a knowledge. And uh, when we apply the knowledge, we understand something. By doing this, by applying this knowledge, I understood this. And when you understand something and um, when you keep doing that and uh, later come, either, whether you pass or fail or you succeed or lose, whatever you do, you realize something so you and that's the realization is wisdom and that cannot be given so you can give someone the data you can give someone information but you cannot give someone a realization they have to go through themselves they have to go but to be able to realize something you have to know understand do and then realize and that's how you get it so that's what i meant by that um there is a big difference between sometimes we confuse just because i have data and information doesn't mean for me to realize what I want to do, um, what kind of business I want to do, how I want to help the world. I had to uh, use the knowledge I had to fly the drones, make the drones that what we do, uh, engineering knowledge. Uh, for that, I have to actually go to the place and do scan those towers and understand what are the real problems they're having. I had to see the work, the outcome of the work to realize this is the impact that it's making. So that's what I meant by there is a difference between knowing, understanding, and realizing. Right. That reminds me of a realization that I came to several years ago. 
you know, I realized in, in, in engineering and in construction, there's a lot of teaching. There's a lot of training that, that happens and takes place and it's necessary. It's, it's good. However, you can't train or teach experience. You have to experience Correct. experience. And so that whole lot, you can have a book, you can have all this wealth of knowledge. And if it's just, you know, learn knowledge, it's a book sitting on a shelf. Yes, and, and I can read, I can learn, <laughs> gain, but if I don't go out and try it, uh, several years ago now, I became a private pilot. And one thing that I like to do was, was read the book knowledge and then go practice it in the airplane to mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. what those things that I was learning meant. So I think applied knowledge is going to be good. That's a great encouragement for leaders to understand how about the difference between knowing, understanding, and realizing and gaining, you know, real experience and, and how they're doing things. Again, that points back to the point, you, and you said it just now, when you got out and saw what you're doing with your drones and realized what, what it was doing, that the importance of it, the value of it, now you can give a better value proposition to your next client. Correct. And now we have a, something legitimate to show that we actually solved this problem and this was the impact that it created. So it also helps your credibility as a leader, um, not only as a leader, but also as like a person in the marketplace or a company in the marketplace, how you lead your team, how people look at you. They're not just looking at you in a way like, okay, they're just providing services. No, we are actually providing, creating solutions, the problem that been existed for a very long time that we didn't even knew existed that was there. And um, I think what I don't, and I, you know, before I said in the beginning, I'm not an engineer. I don't know how those engineering stuff works, but what I'm good at is seeing and communicating with people um, who actually know what it is and trying to get information from there, uh, creating a team around it, one particular problem. So you don't necessarily need to know everything. You just gotta have a, a goal and a good intention or the, uh, the outcome you want. Yeah, I think that's so important. In fact, you can't know everything. Uh, no one single person is is the answer for everything. I think that's a great point that you, you bring out there. Well, let's talk about something else you had here, being an, an industry disruptor. So you kind of give us some ideas of, of what service you have provided and, and why you've mm -hmm. done it. But how have you become an industry disruptor in what you're doing? Um. You know, I was talking to someone else uh, yesterday, actually, and I saw the word uh, disruptor, and it's very loosely used word right now that everyone's saying like, oh, we are the industry disruptor. Just because you are doing something new doesn't really make you an industry disruptor, you know? Um, what makes you an industry disruptor is the work you do or something that you create is completely changed the, way, uh, the things were being done before and how they're being done right now. And when I say we are in the industry disruptor, it doesn't mean that we are just coming up with something new. Maybe we use the same product, the same technology that we, people have been using it before, but how we use it and what we do with that, that's important. So any, anyone can be an industry disruptor, not because by doing something new, but because of doing something that would completely change the, uh, the future outcomes of those things. So to give you an example, um, we use, drones from any different industry. And I use uh, use example of drone because that's what I do. This is what, um, this is uh, whole the business is based on that. So uh, before they were using drones, to, uh, uh, airplanes and helicopters to look at the massive farms or they walk on the property and they see uh, what's wrong with the crop or they kind of guess that what's wrong with the crop based on what they see out there with their human eye. But using drone, what we do is, um, let's say farmer is spending a million dollar on fertilizer each year. I'm talking about big farming land. And um, instead of spraying the fertilizer exactly where it needed to be, they spray everywhere, kind of guessing because one, um, one side is bad. That means other side might be bad. So let me just be sure. But they're um, wasting so much money on unnecessary stuff. So what we do is drones been around for a very long time. This NDVI technology has been around for a very long time, but how we use it is we give the data to the farmers and give them exactly pinpoint. So they stop spending all the millions of dollars they're spending on fertilizer and spend only the 10% of it or 20% and actually uh, make a better crop that way. So that mean, that's what it means to me and being, uh, being an industry disruptor. You know, you are 
providing something that's actually helping your client and they're not going to go to the old method after they see that. So that's what it means to me. Right. You know, you, you talk about, you know, helping the, the client save money, but it also goes back to what you said in your bio about protecting the planet. When, when you reduce yeah. fertilizer by 90%, now there's less of these toxic hazards going into the environment uh, that, that they are necessary. I mean, we have to have these things to grow our fruit and be yeah. a sustainable uh, farming industry. But when we can reduce the amount, it definitely lessens the impact. So I think that's something Absolutely. else that just it aligns with, you know, being this disruptor also aligns with what you're trying to achieve in your personal goals. Yes. And that's why I chose the three, those three of the industry energy, because uh, I, there is many ways you can do this work and you provide your services, but I had to make this very important decision. Like it's okay. The business is good. Like business uh, always going to make money and do this kind of stuff. But as a person, what I leave behind uh, and how I do that is through my business. We show, we all express ourselves in the, th the way we do things, you know, some people are amazing artists. They express their themselves and their creativity with their art. Some people show them by their food that they make, um, what wonderful chefs around the world. For me, it's um, this is this is how I express myself. So what I wanted to leave behind is I want to create create solution that helps the people the most, and that's why I choose only three main necessity of the modern world: energy. We all need electricity. And by doing that work, we prevented 11 fires in California. Agriculture, we are uh, uh, using drones and this technology to, everyone needs food to reduce the, um, the use of fertilizer and the pesticide and trying to, uh, and also save money. And in infrastructure, we all need place to live. So we inspect critical infrastructure like uh, uh, bridges or rail tracks or even the roof of the house. Yeah, and we use the same technology for all of that. We literally use a similar machine, similar softwares, but it's crazy. Just by taking a time and uh, figuring out what you want to leave behind could really impact your business and the community around you. That is amazing. Great, great to hear you talk about that. But you've also done some innovative things with the drone technology. So you, you've made some changes and, and, and added things to drones. Tell us a little bit about that, yeah. how you've have you changed that industry. Sure. So before the, how everything, the drone and everything, how it started was back in India. Since I was a kid, I love birds and I love the things that fly. And I always just like observe them and always trying to make my own planes. Uh, so before I came to America, I was 19 and um, 2015, that was the time. And I made a drone in India, but I could not do anything because I had to come here. We waited 18 years to come to America. We finally came here. So we left everything behind. And when we came here, okay, I'm like, Dairy Queen, I'm going to use that job as a stepping stone and um, create my own company that we're going to manufacture our own drones that would solve problems. But I didn't have money or budget or knowledge or skills, even a team to do achieve what we're doing right now. So I'm like, okay, I don't have red. I'm going to use blue. What I, whatever I have right now, I'm going to use that and um, start where I'm, where I'm at. So we, we started buying the drones that already exist, but uh, there's only certain things we could do. So now when I um, in a position to um, use some money to research and development and creating our, uh, our own technology that doesn't exist out there, I'm like, okay, now it's time to create a drone that fits our mission. And we didn't create that for someone else. We, we make that to better serve our client. And that's what makes us different than any other companies out there. So if technology doesn't exist, we create it and we use it to solve that particular problem. So the, the innovation you probably heard or saw recently was uh, we created a drone that collects the gas data from the air. So the, the uh, and we work with Florida as one of the biggest fertilizer company. I can't give them name, uh, but um, they're one of the biggest and we use drones uh, on their site to see how much toxic gas they're em uh, emitting and give them their information so they can keep their emission under EPA regulation and it's better for the environment too. So if there is a problem exists and if it's solvable, we create a technology to solve it. For me, uh, my passion is the things that fly, uh, aviation. So 
my solutions are focused on that. For other people, it's different things. And there are other industry leaders and they're accelerating in their own industry as well. But for me, aviation and the real world pro uh, problem that I, as much as I can solve. Yeah, it's always great to align your purpose and your passion with each other. Make makes for a, for a great job and something you can uh, have interest in doing. Not to say that it's not hard. You know, you you've definitely overcome some things and some great challenges. Absolutely. But but it, you realize what the end game is, the end goal is, and you're happy about doing that, and it makes you stay committed. That's correct. Um, having an end purpose or end end goal, whatever you have, uh, actually helps you overcome those challenges a lot easier because. Your challenges become so small when you have a purpose so big. Um, so, Rut, say that for us again. Your, your challenges <laughs> become, say that one more time. Challenges become a lot smaller when you have a big purpose or something oh, like that. I don't great. know what I said. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's that's great. I'm writing that one down. So, I definitely have to use that in the future. Well, the one last thing I want to talk about here, and, and you definitely exemplified this the courage. You, you know, you talk about having courage. And how important that is to what you've done in your life and the success you've had. In fact, I want to tell the listeners, you know, one day we're going to be reading about Rut Patel and some big magazines and things of the innovations that he's done. I just see that as far as no one, no one recognizes what he's already done. He's got some great things in line. But talk about courage and how important that has been to you. And I think um, courage is the biggest thing. Um, that's the only qualification I have. Uh, I don't have a degree. I don't have uh, skills to communicate the way other people. It's getting better every day. But one thing I had uh, since the beginning was the courage to step into those things. And when I, I knew that, that I have a courage to do that, I actually had to go and go through that to understand it. And then I realized, okay, this is the only thing I have to have to carry on to that. And when I saw I show courage into doing business, uh, doing work, solving problems. Other people show, started showing courage in me, uh, started showing courage in what they were doing. So I'm like, okay, it's not a joke. It's definitely a, something that everyone should seriously think about that even though it feels like, you know, sometime like, okay, these problems are so big. I don't know what I want to do. I'm scared of this. Having the courage is very important and you can develop that by it's a choice. Being courageous is a choice, just like how being confident is, you know, you become courageous by knowing that something's wrong and you still do it like, okay, I still want to do this. Even this is wrong. doesn't make sense. That's a courage. And usually it turns out to be a good, good thing. In my case, it always turned out to be a good thing. Yeah. There's a quote I love and I'll probably get it, not get it perfect here, but it talks about courage isn't the absence of fear. Courage is having fear and then doing what you know to do in the presence of fear. And, and so that's so important. I appreciate that. Listen, it's time for us to wrap the podcast. For those that are watching on YouTube, I brought up Rutt's uh, engineering website, which is voyagerengineering.com. What other ways can our listeners get in contact with you, Rutt? You have LinkedIn, I'm sure. What other platforms are you, are you on? Uh, LinkedIn is a good way. Instagram, uh, voyagerengineering.com. If you have any question, you can always reach out to me. Uh, you can look up, uh, usually you will find me on Facebook. If you just search my name, uh, LinkedIn, any social media, you'll find me. That is great. So listen, we're going to include that in the show notes. So we'll have his website and then you can find him by doing searches on both LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. I appreciate you listening to the podcast today. I know he got, Rutt gave us some great insights around purpose, around uh, being knowledgeable and, and being a disruptor. And then that last piece on courage was excellent. Do me a favor, go to our website, buildcs.net, check out the services we provide. Share this podcast with others, that someone that you know needs to hear what Rutt had to say today, and then subscribe to our podcast. Also, we have started Voices for Leadership. You go to voicesforleadership.com, find out more about that. Our book is going to be coming out. We're having a book launch in March. I'm so excited about that. And those 40 authors that have joined me to write this amazing book. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for listening to the podcast today. Remember to build yourself and then build others.